Hello folks, this is Solo once again. Welcome to another video for Team Fight Tactics. This is taken from the public beta environment. This is another early look at set five. You might be able to tell from how many videos I'm doing that I've been enjoying a lot of this early look at set five and been enjoying testing it out on the public beta environment. And in this game, we're going to be looking at a trait that I haven't featured yet, and that is the Draconic trait, which is this set's version of a gold generating trait, like your pirates or your fortune from past sets. So we'll have a chance to look at that trait and talk a little bit about how it functions. I will mention here, just while we're on these early minion rounds, that one of the fun things about the public beta environment is that you do get uh, riot points for just for playing games, you know, the RP that you can use to buy things with. And so that's allowed me to pick up some of the things that I normally wouldn't get because it costs money in the store, like enough different versions of the little Feather Knights, little legends. So uh, <laughs> this is the, I think it's the hot and spicy or extra spicy Feather Knight. And I'm finally able to mess around with some of the other Feather Knights, which is my favorite little legend that I can't normally get because it, you know, you have to spend money to re-roll little legends in the shop by buying eggs and the stupid slot machine system. So. Uh, get a chance to test out some of this uh, uh, additional extra stuff. Also get a chance to test out some of the different stages that normally cost RP. But uh, one thing that happens is every time you download a new patch, it goes back to this default stage. This is like the default one. And uh, there's a new patch every single day. So I had forgotten to set this to one of the new stages before this took place. Okay, so what happened here? We're on the initial minion rounds. Uh, I had a Nidalee drop from the initial minion rounds. And so I was thinking, you know what? Let's play Skirmishers for this game. I thought it would be, uh, that that was kind of my initial plan going into this because Nidalee's a three cost champion and I thought I could look to play through her. Um, but what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna get another drop on a different Draconic champion and I'm actually gonna get three Draconic in here really early. And so that would be the sign to play Draconic is if you're able to get um, Draconic in really, really early um, into the game. Uh, it is a trait that you want to play early if you're going to play it. So I actually thought that I made this a little slightly earlier than I ended up doing. Uh, for right now, I don't really have anything in here, but I will go ahead and toss in the Kha'Zix to make Dawnbringer. And at this point, I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to itemize the Nidalee because she's a three cost unit. I'm, I'm still thinking at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and play through Skirmishers. And so I go ahead and make a Hand of Justice on her just so I have one item. And uh, note that I also have a Nico's help, which is actually pretty good to have for a Draconic setup because Draconic is all about playing into um, making three-star champions. Uh, it's something that you're looking to do just due to the way that the trait works. Okay, so I actually thought that I had a decent setup here. Uh, had the Dawnbringer trait in play, but it turns out this first round actually doesn't go very well at all because the other team just able to focus fire me. I guess I didn't have any two-star champions, whereas there's an Aatrox over there on the other team. And so I actually lose pretty handedly. I was like, wow, I thought that I was a little bit stronger than that. I didn't expect to get 3 0 by someone uh, or get to lose without even having a, a unit in play from someone who didn't even have four units in. So here's where I decide I'm going to switch into, to Draconic. I find both a Zyra and an Ash. Uh, Draconic has five total units. There's a one cost, a two cost, uh, two, 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 three costs, and then a five cost legendary unit. So I was like, oh, okay, well, this looks like the perfect time to play into Draconic because I've gotten both a Zyra and an Ash here uh, at, at uh, early early odds here. So I'm going to look to play these and now Draconic Trade is in uh, starting on stage 2-2. Two, two. And as I said, you would want to get this trait in play early if you can. So what does this trait do? Well, the trait actually does not have any combat powers whatsoever. And that's why it's similar to past gold generating traits, as I said, like Fortune or Pirates or things like that. Uh, what happens with Draconic is every time that you have it in uh, at the start of each round, well, at the start of the next round, it won't start this round because I didn't have the trade in. Uh, at the start of the next round, you will lay little eggs on your bench. And then after a couple of rounds, those eggs will end up hatching and they can have either gold in them or additional champions. I'm also gonna mention something. This was a uh, one day version of the PVE that had a very strange bug. And that bug is you don't get money for winning rounds. Uh, I know that that might seem really strange, but I did not get any gold for winning that round. And that's just a bug that happens to be around in this unique version of the PBE. It was it fixed the very next day, but it was something that was around and just makes this kind of a weird video, one of those things that just happens as a result of being on the public beta environment. Now you might notice that I have a big egg sitting there on my bench and uh, that will hatch in time so long as I keep the Draconic trait in play and it will hold gold or champions in it. 
If you can get up to five Draconic, then you have a chance to, uh, then they switch into golden eggs, which have better rewards. They can actually have items in them instead. But Draconic itself does not provide any in-combat benefits. So as I said, it's an economic trait, and it is not something that actually helps you win rounds. So I don't really tend to like these traits that much. I wasn't a big fortune player in set four or anything like that, but it seemed like it made the most sense. Draconic also did get buffed in the uh, in the uh, PBE patch that came out right before this. So I figured I might as well test it out and see. But basically, I just have Rangers in right now. I don't really have... Uh, that's kind of the only real trait that I have in right now. All right, so I'm trying to look for stuff that I can pair with this uh, vest that I have. I have a Shadow Vest that I picked up in the Armory, so I'm looking for stuff to pair with it. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten that tier, because I would have liked to have gotten the Shadow uh, Frozen Heart, but that's not an option, so I'm looking at different things here. And then I was going to grab the uh, Brawler's Glove, and I was just a little bit slow to move there. That would have gotten me a Shadow... Um, could have made Shadow Shroud of Stillness, which I've had pretty good success with success with. So instead I grab the uh, the belt because the belt is at least on a on a LeBlanc that I can sell for a little bit of extra gold. But uh, that wasn't the item I was looking for and I don't really have a great setup for it. I do find another Draconic Champion in set, but set himself doesn't really do anything. He's just another frontliner and I decide I'll just play him because why not? One of the issues for Draconic is it really doesn't have... The traits on the Draconic Champions don't combine together particularly well. You see me hovering the uh, Shadow Sunfire Cape, which has a nice burn effect, but it also burns the worst person who's wearing it. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make this just so I can use this item and get a little bit more frontline. Uh, as I was saying, the traits on... The uh, other traits that are paired with Draconic don't particularly match up with anything. So who I have four of the five Draconic champions in the game right now. So I have, let's see, I have Ash, who's a ranger. And then I have Zyra, who's a spell weaver. I have uh, Set, who is a brawler. And then I have Udyr, who's a skirmisher. Uh, I will just mention again that Udyr really doesn't look anything like Udyr from League of Legends. So I still don't quite understand that decision to make him a Draconic Champion and give him this bizarre looking skin. But anyway, so none of those traits combine together and it's kind of awkward in particular on the front line. By the way, here is one of the uh, Draconic eggs hatching. So that's kind of nice and we get this, uh, get another Udyr. Uh, and here I'm also going to look for, I'm also going to grab these two Varuses because I'm trying to pair a Ranger with Ash and I'm, I'll play either Vayne or Varus, whichever one I hit two star first. But it's a little bit awkward because, like, if you look at the frontline champs in particular, your frontliners are clearly supposed to be the Udyr and the Set. But, like, their traits are just kind of awkward. Udyr is Skirmisher, and you generally aren't going to have enough room to fit two more Skirmishers to play three Skirmishers in this comp. I guess it's... I guess you can do it. But it's a little bit awkward. Like, there's no Knight in this group. There's no, um... Uh... Like, the... the other frontline traits, there's no Cavalier in this. Like, a lot of the other frontline traits don't really work. And, like, you see what happens here. All my units are one stars. My frontline is too weak. I just get bowled over immediately. And uh, I've taken quite a bit of damage. Like, I do not want to be at 72 health this early on in the game. That is not a situation I want to be in here. So I'm going to need to get stronger than this, or I'm just going to get snowballed out of the game quickly. So, yeah, I don't really have enough frontline. It is nice that these eggs are hatching, and, like, that's going to make the two-star set. But, like, my front line is pretty weak, and it's just getting bowled over too quickly. My damage dealers can't do anything. So if you're playing this team comp, and I want to stress that I am not super familiar with this team comp. I really don't run Draconic a lot. Also, this is still PPE, so it's really early. But whatever. Those, uh, those limitations in play, if you want to play this team comp, the, what you really need is to get these units up to 3-star pretty quickly. Uh, and you do have really good odds to 3-star these units just because... The, uh, the eggs that hatch will always have Draconic units in them if they have units. Uh, like I've mentioned that you can get gold out of the eggs or you can get champions out of the eggs. There are always going to be Draconic units in those eggs. So you, and here I'm going to get a gigantic infusion of gold. Look at that. That was the big egg. Uh, the eggs take different amounts of time to hatch depending on what's inside them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the items here. I'm going to make a chalice on the Zyra. Zyra can use this well. Also, if I can get up to the top Draconic unit, which is Heimerdinger, who's a legendary unit, he's also a, an AP-based champion, so more spell power will work well uh, if I can get Heimerdinger in later on. Uh, so that's kind of the situation. I need to get stronger frontline. Uh, the good news is I did get a Nunu from that uh, creep round, and Nunu will put Brawler in play, so that would help make my frontline a little bit tankier, but really need to find more sets 
and maybe look about getting the set to uh, up to three star. Now the thing is, now that sets two star, he or uh, excuse me, Udir's two star, he does tank a bit better. And note that he did put that burn effect on like the entire enemy team. So that's the advantage of having that uh, evil version of the Sunfire Cape. The disadvantage is the Sunfire Cape burns him too. Uh, <laughs> so it also burns away his health. And that makes my front line a bit weaker. So uh, that round was closer just because now I have a two-star unit. But like I really do need to two-star some of these units. I will say I'm relatively rich from losing all these rounds and having the, uh, the eggs hatching. So uh, I have a choice between two different things again. I do find an ash in the store, so that's nice. And I believe I'm going to look to level here, and then I'll put in the Nunu so that I have a little bit more frontline. At least I get two brawlers in, and frontline is clearly what I need, but still almost entirely one-star champs. I honestly should probably roll here a bit, and I think if I were to do this game again, I would look to roll here. Because I have a lot of money, and I actually have quite a few pairs. Like, I have a pair of Ashes, I have a pair of Sets, and I have a pair of Veins and a pair of Varuses on my bench. Like, if I could just two-star some of these units, I'd actually be in uh, notably better shape. But uh, I'm kind of weak right now just because I have uh, so many individual units. This is also a good time to roll because at level 6, I have good odds to find 1-star, 2-star, and 3-star units, which are all of the Draconic units that I'm playing right now. I will also mention that I don't need to play 4 Draconic units. I only need to play 3 of them, and uh, that's also something that theoretically would have been uh, a better option here. Like, you only need to play three Draconic units, so like, I could take out one of these units, but it's not really clear to me who I would take out. I don't want to take out Ash because she, she's my biggest source of damage. I don't want to take out Zyra, she's got the Chalice. And then, uh, if I take out Set, he's a one-star unit, but I'm getting Brawlers from Set along with that Nunu, so... And Nudir's the only one who's two-star, so it's a little bit unclear which one I would want to remove at this point. There we go. There we make the two-star Set. So you could say, well, take out the Udir, but Udir's now got the Sunfire Cape on him, so, ooh, a little rough. I, in retrospect, it would have been better to put the Sunfire on set, because he's going to be tankier with the Brawler straight. And then Udir could come out of the comp, potentially, and I could just hold him on the bench until I maybe find a Heimerdinger to play Draconic 5. Because Udir's really not a strong unit. Uh, the Draconic trait doesn't do anything economically. He doesn't have Skirmisher in play. Uh, he's just, like, a one-star unit up there on the front lines. <laughs> But anyway, like I said, I do think that in retrospect, rolling to get stronger would have been good here. Just because I was so low on health, but I did actually have quite a bit of money, thanks to getting those eggs. Uh, as you can imagine, Draconic will keep pumping more income into your team over time. But as, since it doesn't provide any combat stats, you have to make good use of that extra money. And rolling a little bit wouldn't have been the worst way to make use of that. Uh, here, this is turning into a close round. Can we finish off this vein? No end up narrowly losing. At least that's not a bad loss. So now that some of my units are starting to get two-starred, I am more competitive. If I had two-starred the Ash or two-starred the Zyra, then I, I definitely would have won that round. But I don't think I'm playing this round this correctly. I think that I should have used the extra gold, as I said, to roll a bit more. But I made that point a couple times already, so whatever. <laughs> Here I do get the option to pick early on the carousel. And uh, if you are playing a Draconic Comp and you get to pick early and there's a Heimerdinger, then you should certainly grab that. Uh, the problem is I don't have anything that I want all that badly, but uh, I will go ahead and grab the... Uh, I do go ahead and grab the Needlessly Large Rod just so I can use it to itemize the uh, itemize the Zyra here. I had the... Um, what was it? I had the, um, the belt and I was looking to pair... I was trying to get some use out of the belt and I thought I could use it to make Morellos. That's probably not the greatest call though, just because I already have healing reduction from that Sunfire Cape. I probably don't need another source of healing reduction. And if I can get up to Heimerdinger, his, uh, he innately provides healing reduction on his... Uh, he innately provides healing reduction on his ultimate. So that is probably not the ideal item. I would have liked to have gotten a sword there so I could have made a Zeke's. I would have, I think that would have been a good call, but there was no sword on the care. So there was an evil uh, shadow version of a sword. But Shadow Zeke's is not really what I'm looking for here. That's not an especially great item in this uh, circumstance. I guess maybe I could have put it on Ash, but I don't really have people to steal attack speed away from. So uh, make the Morellas, but I think that that's a suboptimal choice as well. And I uh, would have liked to have gotten more use out of that. Essentially, in terms of itemizing, you will want to play through whichever one of your three cost units you are um, hitting more of. So, for example, if you're hitting lots of Zyras, then play Spellweaver um, and use that as kind of your main damage source. And if you are uh, hitting lots of Ashes, play Ranger. So right now, because I've hit the two-star Ash, I'm more so playing through the Ranger trait right now. But it doesn't have to be an either or. You can play, spell, play through Spellweaver as well. Uh, here, because I hit the two-star Varus, I'm going to drop the Veins. 
and then look to go from there. I have also have a Ziggs on my bench because he's another Spellweaver, but uh, probably don't need to hold him. And uh, you can see one of the issues with this team is uh, one of the big problems for Draconic is you only have so much spot on your bench. You only get nine slots on your bench. And the eggs do take up room. So uh, in addition to looking to three-star a lot of your units, uh, you're going to see a Draconic Comp wants to three-star as many of its units as possible, which is readily doable because you get so many of them in the eggs that hash. But, uh, you know, it takes up space on your bench to make those units. Like, I have two sets and two Udyr sitting on my bench right now. Uh, and I also have to make room for the eggs as well. That doesn't leave a lot of room on your bench to, to hold this stuff. You can actually run out of space on your bench pretty easily. So yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of an issue right there. So I mean, Ash is providing good crowd control, and these rounds are relatively close, but I'm still losing more than I'm winning. What is it? What is it? I won two rounds and lost three rounds. Unfortunately, didn't get on any kind of a streak there. Uh, going loss, win, loss, win, loss is, is honestly kind of bad from an economic perspective. And I've also... Um, I've also ended up, uh, what is it, losing a fair amount of health. So we get another Udyr, so now we're only three Udyrs away from th Udyr three-star. Udyr himself, not that great, but uh, at least he, as a three-star unit, is a bit stronger. Note as well that Aphelios is in the store, and I was thinking about grabbing the Aphelios here, but I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I have room on my bench just to pick up Aphelios's, but I do regret that. I think in retrospect, it would be better to pick up more Aphelios's here. And just be ready to replace the uh, Varus with the Phillies, because he's just a much better version of a Ranger unit. And of course, if I can find a Kindred unit later, then uh, what I could look to do is go into that. Uh, look, could also look to go into Kindred. And here I actually am going to roll a little bit. So uh, this is something that I think I should have done at 6 instead of at 7, but I'm going to roll a little bit here. And you can see, again, that bench is filling up pretty quickly, running out of slots here. But uh, now I've got 6 sets, and now I've got 7 Udyrs. So... Continuing to roll a little bit. Note that there's another Aphelios, and I'm like, why can't I find all these Aphelios when I'm playing a, a, a straight-up Rangers game? <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to end up uh, picking up the Aphelios, which is a mistake because, as I said, I've ended up finding lots of Aphelios. But this was a decision that I made because I was running out of bench space, and uh, Aphelios does a lot more damage than Varus, so uh, not great here. Unfortunately, this round, I just get absolutely bowled over by this person playing uh, a Skirmisher comp here. They've already got the Jackson... And uh, Jax looks like he's itemized reasonably well. Uh, Bloodthirster and that Shadow Hurricane are, are both very good items. Hand of Justice, not bad, although I don't think it's considered best in slot. So I was like, all right, all right, I want 43 health. This is not looking good. I think I need to keep rolling here at 7 to get stronger, or uh, or else I'm just going to be out of this game, because I am low on health, and this is not, not going well. Once again, I get the choice to pick here. Uh, these are not exactly the items that I want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Shadow Gloves here, and I do manage to hit the Zyra 2 stars, and that is a big deal. So I've got two options here. I could, at least with the items I have, I could make the Dark Shroud of Stillness, which is one of my favorite Shadow items. Or, alternately, I also could have put that on Zyra and made the uh, evil version of the Jeweled Gauntlet. I think in retrospect, the evil version of the Jeweled Gauntlet would have been better, just to do more damage, because Zyra's actually, now that Zyra's 2 starred, she actually does quite a bit of damage uh, with the items that she has. I think that would have been better, but the Evil Shroud of Stillness I actually do like quite a bit, and uh, it's something that I end up making in a lot of my games. I think you can get really good value out of this, especially if people are not scouting and not dodging the Shroud. Not, well, I'm not going to get great value in this round, as it hits absolutely nothing. Uh, poor Udyr has shrouded himself and is burning himself with his own Evil Sunfire Cape, so yeah, not, not the greatest there. Uh, and this round, you can imagine if I had actually gotten that Shroud off, would have been... Uh, would have been probably would have won the round if I had actually hit the team instead of missing it. But it's another loss, and I'm at 34 HP. And again, I need to get stronger here. Need to do something to make my team stronger, or else I'm just going to be out of this game. Uh, and I think that what the best thing I can do is just look to again take some of this gold that I that I've gotten and use it to roll a bit in the hopes of three starring some of these champs. Uh, but as I said, the, the, the mistake was probably waiting until 7 to do this, because the odds to get 1-star units have gone down significantly. Like, the 1-star units are only 19%, whereas if I'd rolled on 6, I would have had better odds. That said, I am fighting a lot of Udyrs here, so I was kind of hoping that that egg would have one last Udyr to get to Udyr 3-star, but uh, it doesn't quite happen there. So, like, here, I'd like to pick up this Victor, but there's just no spot, no room on the bench. I can't pick it up. And I don't really want to sell these other units. I sell the Zyra, but I think that's a mistake because I have I have pretty good odds to three star Zyra. And like, look at this. Now I'm at at uh, a bunch of ashes as well. And there's another set, and I'm like, oh man, I'm completely out of room on my bench here. I just need to clear up more bench space for these units. So, uh, like I said, 
you really do want to three star these units and because they come out of the draconic eggs you have good odds to three star these units but you have to be careful because you can run out of bench space pretty early so like i said also rolling a little bit earlier Trying to three-star the set and the uh, Udir a little bit earlier means you can clear up space on your bench. Because right now, what do I have? I have eight Udirs, I have seven Ashes, and uh, I think I have seven sets as well. But I continue to lose these rounds, which is good for me economically, but not good for me in terms of actually staying in the game and not getting, not, uh, you know, just crashing out in like seventh or eighth place. Um, so, as I said, I just don't feel like I'm strong enough here. It would be nice to get a better Spell Weaver than Victor. Uh, I'm hoping to find... Uh, uh, Velkaz would be another good spell weaver. Well, I do get early priority on the carousel, so I can look to find something here. I still would not mind getting uh, a Brawler's Glove so I can make a Jeweled Gauntlet for Zyra, because she does actually do quite a bit of damage. So I'm going to look to run around and get that, and it looks like I will be able to get that, so I was pretty happy with that. So even though uh, I think maybe it would have been better to make the Shadow Gauntlet, it turns out that things work out just fine, and I'm still able to get a useful item on Zyra there. Uh, so again, Zyra does quite a bit of damage, and uh, the biggest issue is it's hard for her to cast, but if I can get her up to uh, if I can get her up to three star, then that would be you know fantastic here. So once again, another egg hatches, but I really am running out of space here on my bench. And again, I'm still looking, looking, looking. It's like ah, if I could just find one more set here, or not, uh, excuse me, one more Udier, that would be great. I'm so I was hoping that one of these eggs would hatch. And make room, and now there's another set. And so ultimately, I go ahead and commit the uh, the Nico's help there, just so I can try, uh, make the three star um, version of Udir. Again, not the best use of the Nico's help. Would be much better to use that on Ash, because like I said, I'm on seven Ashes here. It would be nice to get up to Ash three star. I only need to find one more Ash, but I was just looking to clear out space on my bench, so. Uh, or, or to use it on set, you know, would have probably been better to use it on set as well, just because set's a, a stronger unit. But Udyr was the one that was itemized, so maybe not the worst decision. But uh, I do think that that <laughs> I do think that there was better to use that uh, Nico's help in a slightly better way. And as you can see, I'm still losing these rounds. Now I'm down to what 22 HP. That's probably like one more loss I can take, and then I'll be out. Uh, I find a kale here. I was like, oh, kale. But, uh, and then, by the way, then immediately the insult, adding insult to injury, I get a, a, a an Udyr out of the very next egg. And I was like, oh, man, an Udyr on the very next egg. So here I was like, can I put in the uh, Kale? The Kale does um, put Verdant trait in play. And Kale, of course, does a lot of damage. But now I'm like, oh, wait, but now set's three start. I need to get set three start back in. And I was like, uh, where do I play Kale in this comp? I'm just not exactly sure how to get Kale in. I guess I can go to 8 and play Kale at 8, but ultimately, I end up selling the Kale. That's also also probably a mistake. Probably should go to uh, level probably should go to level 8 and play Kale at 8, because she is another source of damage. And now that I 3 start set and 3 start uh, the Udyr, I actually have a reasonably tanky front line now that they're both 3 stars. So I think it would be better to hold the Kale and then play the Kale at 8. Uh, I'm going to look to go to 8 after this minion round, and go from there. I still do have 7 Ashes, although Ash 3 star is not like an instant win button. Uh, she actually doesn't carry all that hard, because uh, her stats are a little bit lower, since the expectation is you're probably going to be able to 3 star her. Anyway, so uh, I did win the last round, and finally ending that long losing streak, but uh, I'm in very poor shape on health here. I would love to find Heimerdinger. It's slightly unfortunate I haven't found him yet, but uh, I was rolling on... Uh, was rolling here at 7, where I only have 1% odds to find 3 cost unit or uh, 5 cost legendary units. But if I can get him to show up, I can get those uh, uh, golden eggs in play. And I certainly would take Hymer if he's on a carousel. That would be nice. Here I get the items for a static shiv, and I might as well make the static shiv because we're not going to get components anymore. I'll put it on Ash just so she can apply the magic resist debuff. And uh, it's actually not terrible for my team, just because uh, I am doing quite a bit of magic damage. And there, boom, we get an Ash. Uh, right away on from the shop and then an egg hatches out an ash so now we've got ash three star as well and i was like oh okay cool so i'm gonna roll a little bit here again look at all these aphelioses oh if i just now i should certainly pick up the aphelioses and look to play him over the uh I, wow I, I there was actually another aphelios in the shop i didn't even pick it up it's really sad so now i'm trying to figure out what the extra unit i should play is and if i had just held that kale i could play kale here as my extra unit it would actually put Verdant in play and just Kale would do a lot of damage. I could put Kale next to the uh, Chalice and she would pick up the Chalice bonus for even more damage and that would give me another reliable source of damage. So uh, one unit that I could have played did actually get at 1% odds but didn't end up playing. Uh, 
probably would have been a big help there. And I certainly could have picked up these Aphelioses and then looked to replace the Varus with uh, with Aphelios. But the path not traveled, right? Uh, certainly looking at the mistakes I made in this game and thinking about what I could do differently. I would like to go into Heimer, as I've mentioned, but uh, now that I'm at level 8, I actually have decent odds to find him. I think it's, what, 6% odds to find the legendaries at level 8, so there's a decent chance he'll pop up. It is getting late enough that having Heimer in is not going to be that great, because even though he'll put uh, golden eggs in play, it will take a little while for them to hatch. And I am getting a few more Zyrus here. So there's another Ash, but now we can just sell the Ash, because I don't need Ash 3-star. Uh, I've actually 2-starred a good bit of my board here. Uh, I'm looking for another unit to play uh, in that last slot, and I'm like trying to find other frontliners here, and then then I found the Velkaz. I'm like, aha, Velkaz, and then I realized, oh shoot, I probably should have picked up uh, another unit that would fit in that last spot. I probably should play another redeemed unit, and there we go. I managed to get Rel in. Uh, she's another redeemed unit and just a good frontliner overall. So uh, now I have redeemed trade in. That's going to help Velkaz. Velkaz is going to be significantly more useful than the uh, Victor was. Even as a one-star unit, I think it's more useful to have him in there, at least uh, just both because he's a better unit and also because he puts Redeem trait in play. There is a Viego in the back lines who's kind of messing me up here. Uh, I was hoping that Zyra could get off one more cast, but no. Zyra not able to get off one more cast. Uh, that Draven on the enemy team got low, but I couldn't quite manage to kill the Draven. And so now I'm down to just a, a very, very low health here and looking to try to fill this out. There's another set, but again, I could just sell the sets. I do have six Zyra's, so that's pretty nice. And as I said, Zyra's turning into a decent carry. Uh, I do have quite a few three stars, three star Udyr, three star Set, three star Ash, making progress towards a three star Ash. But uh, the rest of my board is still kind of weak. And uh, like I said, I don't know that the itemization is quite where I want it to be. I, I would prefer to have Ash, maybe better items on Ash. Also, yet another Aphelios in the store, WTF. Although, if I were to play Aphelios over Varus now, it would cost me Redeemed, which uh, is not critical to this comp. I mean, the Velkaz and the Varus and uh, the Rel are none of them really need Redeemed trait, like super duper hard, but it certainly doesn't hurt having a little bit of extra stats coming in from that trait. Uh, Velkaz actually gets off a really nice beam, though. So good job, uh, Velkaz. And uh, Velkaz kind of wins the fight there for me, just by managing to kill off the backline of the enemy team. And uh, that person over there is also playing Draconic Quake, so I wouldn't mind having them go out of the game so that they will stop stacking up the eggs, and so I won't be competing with them for units. Uh, although it's not the worst thing to have another uh, Draconic player in the game because it does take some of those units out of the pool, but if they are going for three stars, it also in some ways makes it a little bit easier to get the three stars because, oh man, and then that's super sad. There's a Heimerdinger with a, a Zeke's there. I'm like, oh man, no... Uh, no Heimerdinger with the Zeeks for me. I got second pick on Carousel and I still can't get it. But of course, that's because Quake is the other person playing Draconic. So of course that person wants Heimer as well. I was like, man, why couldn't one more of my units have survived? Uh, and then I would have knocked that person out and then I could have grabbed the Heimer. Heimer would give me Draconic 5 and then I'd be able to put, uh, I'd start getting the golden eggs, which have a chance to have items in them as opposed to just normal stuff. There's another Kale. So uh, again, but where would I play Kale in this comp? Well, I could certainly play Kale over, uh, could play Kale over the uh, Rel. That wouldn't be the worst decision. Probably should do that because uh, I think my front line is okay, but it sure wouldn't hurt having Kale in this comp as well. I think that that was something I just didn't see. I didn't want to take Ranger out because Ash is a good part of my damage, but I could take Rel out. I think my front line is okay. I think it could be better, but I do have double. Uh, I do have double uh, three-star units in there in the set and also the uh, the Udir. But yeah, I mean, I, it sure would be nice to have Kale in this team comp, wouldn't it? And I've passed up on Kale multiple times now. Uh, I actually could be getting close to Kale 2-star. Uh, and in fact, if I'd held that Nico, I could have had Kale 2-star. So here, unfortunately, the front line is dying. I really just need to kill that Draven. That Draven has gotten low on health multiple times in this fight. But I'm not quite able to kill the Draven and oh, go down to 2 HP. It's like, well, so this is certainly my last life now. Uh, it, it's a good thing that like a couple more units didn't survive or I would have just been dead there. And then you probably wouldn't have been watching this video. So there's another Zyra. And there's yet another Zyra. It's like, oh... Ooh, I'm only one away from Zyra 3-star. And then I actually hit it. I was like, oh, okay. Well, that gets me back in the game. Now I've got the Zyra 3-star. Uh, and I only need one more Velkaz. And then I get Velkaz as well. I was like, oh, wow. Well, it's a good thing I survived that round. So at this point, there's not really any point in rolling further. I've kind of 2-starred everything. 2-star slash 3-starred everything. I've actually 3-starred every Draconic unit. 
And as I said, that's kind of what you need to do to um, make this comp more powerful. Here I was realizing, you know what? A lot of people are playing their a lot of people are playing their carries on the left hand side, so I should probably just reverse my formation and get the evil shroud of stillness over there on the left hand side. Uh, now that Zyra's three star, she does a lot of damage with those items. She uh, doesn't cast that often because she doesn't have any mana generating traits and her mana costs are reasonably high. I think she has like a 90 or 100 mana to cast her spell. But, you know, as a three-star unit with a, a Morellos and a Jeweled Gauntlet and uh, what's her other... And the Chalice, uh, she's going to do a lot of damage when she actually does cast. And hey, we've still got, still got those eggs hatching. Don't need any more Zyras now, though. And I can sell off the Nautilus. I'm trying, I was trying to think, what is the next unit I would put in this team comp? As I end up getting, what is this, another... Oh, I get a Spellweaver uh, spatula here. So there is the... Theor now that I've got a Spellweaver spatula, there is the theoretical chance to play four Spellweavers at level 9. So that's something I have to think about. But uh, I kind of already have the top Spellweavers. It's like, do I really want to play like a Victor at level 9? I could probably find a better unit than that, maybe even though four Spellweavers wouldn't be bad. So that's kind of not the item I wanted. I, I wouldn't have minded like another just Frontliner unit, uh, Frontliner item there. And uh, yet another Zyra. By the way, there's another Aphelio. So WTF, I could have had, I could be getting close to like three-star Aphelios at this point. So what the heck, man? <laughs> so many Aphelioses. The decision not to uh, play Aphelios uh, in this game, definitely a, definitely a mistake. Now, again, I wouldn't have redeemed it if I played Aphelios, but maybe I could then play Knight. You know what? Then I could just replace play, Rel with a different uh, Frontliner. Maybe I could have like found Garen or or not Garen, uh, found Darius and played Darius for Frontline instead, and then I'd have Nightbringer trade in, so whatever. Uh, here, though, I'm going to get off uh, an okay Evil Shroud. What I'm most concerned about is the uh, Viego right here, the Viego who's jumped on my um, Ash. But the good news is it looks like we have just barely enough to take him out. And is this going to eliminate this player? Yes, it does. Now that we're on stage six, you just barely knock that player out. And so now we're going to be down to just three players here. And in fact, if uh, one of these people went, oh, that was a chance to go down to just two players there. But it looks like Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh won the ghost round. And then I finally get a Heimer. I was like, ooh, Heimer. But then I was like, wait a minute. Well, what do I take out to put Heimer in? I was like, I don't think I can take any of these units out. I guess it would be Rel, but I don't think I want to do that at this stage of the game. I was like, I don't think I want to take Rel out. Because that does cost me Redeemed, which is actually doing a fair bit on Velkaz now that I have Velkaz 2-star. So I was like, alright, well, let's just sell the Kale, we'll go to 9, we'll try to play Heimer at 9. If I can survive a couple rounds here, then maybe I can get the Heimer in. At this point, it's honestly too late to really do anything with Draconic 5, because there's not enough rounds left in the game to get items. But look at this Shroud, by the way. Oh, ho, ho, ho. hit the Draven, hit the Kale, hit the uh, half of the front line there. The evil Shroud of Stillness pretty much is going to win this fight for me straight out, just by hitting the entire enemy, well, like two-thirds of the enemy team and getting that evil Shroud on them. Uh, I honestly think that I lose this round if I don't get that uh, Shroud placement. So again, scout the other teams, watch what people are doing in the lobby. Yeah, because that Kale was ramping up, and that Kale was like three seconds away from killing my whole team. But uh, I win the round, and hey, now it's down to just me and this other player. So looks like we're going to have a duel here between the two of us. As I'm, I'm just looking here, it's like, all right, I just need to win. If I can win one more round, I can look to do this. So we're up against the Skirmisher player. You might remember I hit this person maybe like six rounds ago, and I just got destroyed. They have six Skirmisher, and they've also teched in... Uh, it looks like they've put Gary, or, uh, Garen on their front line. But like the Jax is the main carry here. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to move to reposition the Shroud to try to hit their team. And it looks like I'm going to be able to get most of their team. Oh, the other thing is I was trying to position this so that Viego would jump onto Aphelios. I want their Viego to jump on a unit I don't care about. Uh, because like I don't really care if Viego's soul steals from Varus. Varus is not a very good unit at all. Uh, so uh, I don't really care if he takes out that unit. And uh, it looks like the front line is holding up. Can we manage to deal with the... Wait, how did he soul steal the... Apparently my Udyr got taken over as well, and ooh, look how close that is. I just barely squeaked that one out. I don't know how my uh, Udyr got taken over by Viego. Were there two Viegos in, on that board? I don't know. Uh, well, in any case, we have a chance to pick. I actually would have liked this Wormogs, but it gets taken, so that's a little bit sad. So I just decided I'll go ahead and take another Chalice. I think, thought that that made more sense than anything else here. Uh, that Shadow Spatula is kind of interesting, but I don't have any components left, so that's not going to do anything there. All right, so let's go ahead and yeah, hatch that out. And I do have enough now to get to level nine, so I will go ahead and put in Heimer. So by the way, yet yet another Aphelios. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the Heimer in. 
And I'll just slap the uh, Chalice onto the uh, onto the Velkaz, who's actually doing quite a bit of damage right now. So uh, this person's actually has level 8, but they have a Force of Nature, so they have an extra unit in. And I was trying to look to reposition, but I was like, alright, I'll stay here. I think that my the positioning went well for the last round. So uh, look to continue to stay here. But uh, note that the person did shift Viego over to uh, the left-hand side. So I am concerned about that. If Viego takes over Velkaz, that would be really bad for me. But Velkaz gets off a full channel ult, and that kind of decimates the enemy team. So we're kind of in Velkaz carry here, even though Velkaz is not a Draconic unit. But yeah, we've gone into that. So Velkaz and Zyra kind of carry the fight here. And I'm able to do 16 damage to this person. I was like, all right, all right. Making progress there. And now I've got another Rel. So by the way, note that there's a golden egg on the bench now, now that I have five Draconic in. Heimer puts down a turret, and then his turret shoots out lots of flames. So what I was trying to think right now is, like, what unit can I put in? I was really thinking I'd like to get Ironclad in gear, um, just because I thought Ironclad would be good against this team, who is almost entirely physical. But what I'm not doing is I'm not paying enough attention to what this person is doing in terms of their team. What I really should have done was I needed to shift my formation. Note that Jax is shifting over to the left. I needed to reverse the formation and put my Shroud on the left-hand side. Note that the Shroud is now not hitting anything, because this person has correctly noticed that I was Shrouding his whole team and shifted the Shroud over to the other side. So I've made a big mistake here. And uh, this time I'm not going to get as good of a Velkaz ult off. It's not enough to kill the Jax. And I was like, oh, I got too caught, too caught thinking about my team. I wasn't focused on positioning. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's what's going to happen right there is if you don't position that Shroud correctly, it's going to end up uh, in a loss there. So that's kind of sad. I think I could have won that. I needed to win two more rounds, that one, and then one after the next Dragon. But oh, well. At least I got to show off Draconic, even though I made plenty of mistakes in this game. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, like I said, let's hatch some eggs. It's uh, a bit of fun to play Draconic. Anyway, see you guys again soon. Have a good one. Take care.